Do you ever feel like you're doing all the right stuff, but nothing's working? Like you just can't get any web design clients or emailing people, calling people, going to networking events. Just doesn't seem like anybody wants to buy a website anymore. Well, I was in that same situation too. And I want to share with you the one realization that I had that completely changed everything. And it seems like it should have been obvious, but for whatever reason, it was a huge blind spot for me. And if it is for you too, then I think this is really going to change everything for you. So I started my web design business in 2002. And when I first started the business, I was working with other agencies. Like all of my work came from other agencies. Like I had uh, like a couple of relationships with ad agencies, direct mail firms, and they were just sort of like outsourcing their web design work to me so they didn't have to hire an internal web designer. Because remember back in 2002, like in that era, it was expensive to build websites. You had to have a computer science degree just to host the website. You had to have a technical degree. And so they didn't want to have an in-house person do all of that stuff for them because it was expensive and they didn't do all that much web design work. So they would just outsource it to me. And it, that took me for about eight years. And then I got to the point where, well, WordPress was coming out, they were hiring their own web designers, I was getting less work, and it became obvious that I was gonna have to reach out and get my own clients. And when I started to reach out to actual like local service businesses, I couldn't land any web design clients. I was saying the same stuff that got me the connections with the ad agencies, but when I would say that to these other clients, to like local service businesses, it just wasn't landing. It was crazy. And I, and, I, and I can tell you exactly why with this example. So a year, about a year and a half ago, I guess, I went out and I bought a John Deere tractor. And I'm not a tractor person. Like, I don't really know anything about tractors, but I do live out here on 15 acres of land and like three of the acres, I got to cut the grass. And I was using this old, like, <laughs> the Sears riding lawnmower from back when I used to live closer into the city and everything. And it just literally couldn't cut it. Like it was getting clogged and I have to like scoop out all the grass from underneath. And it was just taking me like four or five hours to like mow the lawn. And I found that to be really frustrating. So I go into the John Deere dealership and I start looking around at these tractors. And like, granted, I don't know anything about the details of tractors. The sales guy comes over and he starts pointing out all these features like the the V-twin cooling thing or the K-46 transaxle thing. Or I, was like, I don't know anything about any of that stuff. And so that wasn't like he was selling me on the features and it just wasn't landing in the same way that when I was going out to these local service businesses and I was telling them about the features of the website, I'm sure it sounded like I was talking about a K-46 hydrostatic transaxle or whatever. But for me, what, what, what the way that I ended up buying the, the tractor is he says to me, well, well, why are you even, why, why did he come in? I was like, well, you know, I'm cutting all this grass and my, my current lawnmower is it's like clogging up. It's like taking me like four or five hours to mow the lawn. And I was, man, I was just, just hoping there was some way I could get, you know, just be more efficient with that. He's like, well, how much grass do you have? I was like, it's only two or three acres. He's like, well, if you get this tractor right here, you can mow an acre in about 45 minutes. I was like, boom, sold, that's it. That was what I wanted to hear. I could mow an acre in 45 minutes, which meant that instead of the four or five hours it was taking me, it could now be done in like an hour and a half, maybe two hours, right? So more than cutting the time in half, totally sold. And you know what I call that? I call that a flashpoint. And you know, like in like science or, or chemistry or whatever, the, the, like the technical meaning of that word is like the lowest temperature at which something starts to ignite. It's like, the, it's like the, the exact moment when something starts to burn. And what I'm thinking is like the, the burning desire to have the thing. Like as soon as he said, mow an acre in 45 minutes, I immediately wanted that tractor, that exact one. That's the one. I had that flashpoint. And so then I thought, well, how can I put flashpoints into my outreach as a web designer? So I started to look at other flashpoints that other businesses have used, right? So like everybody that sells anything to anybody they all have these flashpoints in their marketing. So let me give you some examples. So remember the Sony Walkman? Their flashpoint was personal music anywhere you go. All right, because that was like when the first time you could put like a tape into this portable thing and you could go out and about with your own music instead of having to be tied down in your house. And then the Palm Pilot came out, remember that? That was your calendar, your contacts, your notes in your pocket. That was huge, that's like, that predated like phones and iPods and stuff. But then Google came out, that was, get instant answers, right? Or get answers instantly, I think is what it was. And then the iPod came out, that was a thousand songs in your pocket, right? Because remember, if you were using the Sony Walkman, maybe you're used to having like a tape with, what, I don't know, maybe 15 songs on it, and now you got a thousand songs in your pocket, right? That's awesome. And then Amazon Prime came out. What's the flashpoint for Amazon Prime? That was free two-day shipping on everything, right? So that's, that's awesome. Like you, as soon as you hear that, you're like, I would love to have that. That's a huge problem with, with e-commerce at, at that time. And then Uber, remember Uber comes out? It's like, well, tap a button, get a ride. <laughs> it's like, that's really cool. But here's the one that's really weird, GoPro. 
So this one is really weird because the, their flashpoint has almost nothing to do with the product at all. So everything we've talked about so far, it's at least mostly about the product, but not about the features, but about the flashpoint for why I want it. But GoPro, their flashpoint is be a hero. <laughs> it's like, what does that even mean? It's like, you can, there's so many different ways to be a hero. Like it doesn't necessarily even mean it's a camera. But that's the point. It's like, you, if you want to be the hero and you want to show people the stuff that you're doing, buy this camera. And that's what makes you start wanting things. And I'll tell you why I think this was a blind spot for me. It was because I don't like to think of myself as being like an overly emotional person and making all these you know, irrational, emotional decisions all the time. I like to think that I use logic and facts and reason. And I just go through all of the features or whatever and decide that's a good thing. But I don't care who you are and what area of life you're in, nobody buys anything unless you feel like buying the thing, right? So like ultimately it comes down to, do you actually have the emotional desire to want the thing? And I was flipping that upside down and that's why I couldn't get any clients. So like if you feel stuck in the same way that I was, where you're just out there emailing people and networking and just doing all of the things that you're supposed to be doing, but you're not getting the response, I bet you have it flipped, just like I did, where you start with the features and you hope the features create that emotional response. But if you flip it and you start with the emotional response and you get the buy-in, then the people, then, then what, well, you use the features to justify the decision. You don't use the features to create the decision. You see the difference? It's, it's, a, little, it's a little bit subtle. And it was, a, it was strange for me to think of myself that way because I don't generally think of myself as being emotional. I, I think of myself as being more logical, but I just had to accept the truth that everybody buys things only because they feel like buying them. And if you don't feel like buying it, you're just not going to do it. And so if I like, how do I spark that emotional drive to buy things? And that's where I come, come, come up with this concept of, of this flash. Point. I didn't come up with the concept flash. Point. I just came up with the name that helps me figure out how do I put a flash point into my marketing so that it sparks that desire. So people actually want me, right? So it's, I want, I want to be like when, when he said, Hey, this tractor will mow an acre in 45 minutes. That was the exact tractor that I, I literally wanted the one he was pointing at. And that's what I want. Like I want somebody to, to hear the stuff that I had to say about how I can help their business. And I want them to point and say, well, I want to work with you. Not anyone who can build websites, but me specifically. So what are some examples of flashpoints that we could put into our marketing as web designers? Well, I wrote down a couple of examples. One is, what if you got booked jobs straight from Google, right? Like there's, there's the things that we can do. Like you can hook up a Google business profile with a booking system and like you don't have to talk about the details, but the end result is people just go to Google and book a job, right? Or what about this? No more slow weeks. Like what if you're a local service business, you're not getting the leads that you want and you would love it if you didn't have to deal with any more slow weeks. Or what about appointments on autopilot? Or we'll get you fully booked or get your business all over Google or uh, turn clicks into clients. Or if you're a chiropractor, like back to back adjustments every day, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Where I'm not talking about the details or the features. I'm talking about the outcome. I'm talking about that initial flashpoint that would make people actually want to start working with you. And here's how you can tell that you've hit, hit on one that actually is, is going to work because the next thing the person says is really, how do you do that? Right, so like if I, if I reach out to a chiropractor and I say, hey, I've got this, this marketing platform and we really specialize in just getting back-to-back -back adjustments scheduled for you every day. I bet that would at least raise the chiropractor's eyebrows, right? Like, it'd be like oh, really, like, how do you do that? And that's what I wanna know. Like, if I could just get to the point where they're like, oh, really, how do you do that? I know that I've got that hook. I've hit that flashpoint. I've hit on something that they actually want. And then I get to start talking about how I actually do that. But I don't get into the features yet. Like I'm still not gonna get into the features. So if you're curious to see what I would do when somebody says, hey, how do you do that? <laughs> Check out this video right here and we'll go deep into the details on how to get clients to say yes right now without even having to follow up. One call close right here. Check it out and I'll see you right there.